Hey, how you doing? It's Rick Claus, Senior Technical Evangelist at Microsoft Canada. This is a screencast of the demos for a session that I presented at TechEd North America, TechEd New Zealand, and TechEd Australia, and it's called Get Out of Dodge, Migrating to Windows Server 2008 R2 X64. In case you're wondering, those codes for North America, WSV310, New Zealand was WSV302, and Australia was SRV307. Want to find out more about me? Check out my main website at regularitguy.com or about.me slash rickclaws. Demo number four, file server migration. It's almost like a part two of demo number three because they are closely related, file and print. Uh, this is all about sending the bits encrypted like. There are multiple ways of doing this one. You could use the file server migration tool because I was following the line of thought of the existing migration strategy that comes out of the migration library. Uh, I'm going to be using the command line tools. Home base server once again, Windows 2008 R2-DC. My source server is the same box as last time, Contoso-FP1, running 2003. He's got a couple of data shares off of cbox slash data that'll be migrated and have security ACLs for the uh, marketing group and, and sales group. My target system is server 2008 R2 core install contoso-fp1t and verification once again with my Windows 7 system uh, with Win7 client as the name with RSAT because I will be using the um, server manager tool to be able to attach up to and talk to my core install to be able to make some firewall changes a lot easier than doing it at the command line. Let's get started. So here's our temporary core file server box that already had the print server roles installed and the print servers and queues migrated over to it. I'm just going to go ahead and load up the individual services that complement that from a file server perspective. This guy could be part of an FRS replication or he also could be part of DFS. Uh, in this case he's just a regular straight file server but I'm going to load the roles all in as they go. So we got uh, OC setup core file server, OC setup DFS N server, and then also OC setup FRS infrastructure. Again, can't stress enough, make sure you got those things typed correctly because they don't give you any error messages in case things are wrong. Now, for this to work, back over here on the client, I have to go in, because it's a lot easier on this side, and use Server Manager from the RSAT tools to attach up remotely to my Contoso FP1T, my temporary box, remotely. I've already enabled remote management on that guy, and he's a member of the domain. And here I'm going to use this to go ahead and to configure the file server, sorry, not the file server, the firewall uh, parameters. The standard ports that are used by the file, by, sorry, by the um, migration tools are uh, port 7000 TCP and port 7000 UDP. So I'm just going to make an inbound rule here for this individual box to say do a port exception and I'm going to say TCP port 7000. And I'm going to allow the connection across my different uh, profiles, in this case domain, public, and private. I can just give this guy a really simple name of migration TCP. And do the same thing again for the UDP port. You could change these to non-standard port numbers if you wanted to. Uh, obviously you'd have to fire off the appropriate command line when you do the sending and the receiving of data for it to listen on alternate ports. I'm just going to keep the standard here of port 7000 TCP and UDP and then make the rules and then reset the go from the client side. Now here in the original server, Contoso FP1, which is the file server that has my data share, it also has my print queues, but those are already migrated remotely with a different tool. I just wanted to show you the data structure. I've got a cbac slash data. This is a demo environment, nice and simple. I've got marketing, public, and sales that are available underneath the data structure. And that's the data that I'm going to be migrating out. And just to kind of show you the security here, I happen to have this shared out as marketing. And I've got a shared permissions that has a group that's being resolved right now uh, that includes marketing sales. And uh, have that guy set up and ready to go with the migration. Firing up the migration tools. PowerShell commandlet that's going to automatically load in the snap in for the migration tools. And from here, I'm 
I'm just going to do a very simple export Smink server settings. I'm going to migrate all users and all local groups, which is important because those shares are protected by local groups. I'm going to export that out to a path, which is on my temporary migration server once again. And then I'll be importing these guys on the core box in just a moment. Once again, lock it up with the password and then just let it run. Next important step is actually starting the send of the data. Command is send SMIG server data. I give it a computer name, which is contoso-fp1t in this case. I'm going to choose a source. Which is C backslash data. I guess my typing skills are bad today. Data. There we go. And I'm going to choose a destination path. Also the same of C backslash data on the other side. I'm going to save or curse all directories, include all files, force it to take place, give it a password to lock it up. And this guy is basically going to open up that connection and try to make a connection to port 7000 TCP on the remote side. So let's go over now and get that guy up and running. Back over here on my temporary file server, before I can open up that port, I have to fire up PowerShell and import all those groups that were saved in that local file. Once those groups have been imported, then I can make that connection and receive the data. So in this case, just let me add the PSS snap in for Microsoft Windows server manager migration do the import let's make server settings in this case I'm going to bring over the users all of them the groups and the path to find that file is on my Hyper-V box migration data slash local groups I'm going to give it a verbose so we can see the output to make sure it all works fine. Unlock it with a password, and then off we go. It's very important to do the groups and users first before you bring over the data, otherwise the ACLs will be all messed up. You can see if I scroll back, there's some... Uh, Corp Seattle sales, Corp New Orleans, New Orleans sales, New York sales, stuff like that. So we definitely know the groups I actually came across. Now next up is the bringing in of the data itself, which is uh, the receiving of the data. So in this case, the PowerShell command that it simply receives, make server data, press enter. The other server is already sending the data, so the two will notice each other once I put in the password here, and it will start to make the connection. So let me just take this remote control window a little bit lower so you can see both of them at the same time. You can see it's sending and encrypting the data at the same time. If you have a large amount of data, obviously it can take longer. And then the other server goes ahead and just kind of spits out the report of what was completed. So back on the original server, FP1, we don't need him anymore, so it's going to do a shutdown um, with a timer of three. And then we're going to go back over again and finish up on that other side. So on my main domain controller, I could have the command line elsewhere, but on the main domain controller, I'm just going to use the Active Directory used in computer snap in to delete the old computer account of file server one. 
he's no longer required. And then switching back over again to my temporary server, soon to be permanent server. Notice that I've got the Hyper-V remote control client being used here because my IP address is going to change and stuff like that. I want to keep this connection alive. So I'm just using sconfig. Notice that it still has the FP1T as a name. So let's go ahead and choose option 2 to change the computer name to contoso-fp1. It's going to say, hey, are you authorized to do this? Yes, I am. Here's my creds. I'm not going to do a restart just yet. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and change the network settings, just in case there were some people that had some hard-coded addresses to, uh, or hard-coded mappings to addresses. So let's change the first address to 192.168.10.40. Default subnet masks. And default gateway, 192.168.10.1. And then I also need to go in and set my DNS server as well. My DNS server is 192.168.10.20. That's all set. And then let's just go ahead and restart this guy to get them all set up and ready to go. So let's do a shutdown. Slash R for restart, slash T5, and he's going to do restart. Once he comes back up again, and I know that he's all happy, here he comes. I'm just going to flip over here to my Windows 7 client. Now notice here on my Windows 7 client that it lost connection to FP1T because that guy no longer exists. So that's a normal message I'm just going to cancel out of and close off. And I guess I don't need this DS, this DHCP monitor window either, so I'm just going to close him off. And let's bring up that command prompt just to say, show me some shares. So here's a net view to contoso-fp1. And you can see now, because fp1 is the actual new replacement box, he has the same shares and the same printers that are shared out. I'm just going to do a net use next available drive to contoso-fp1 marketing. And let's do a quick dir on that. Oh, that was my local drive. Let's try that again on the Z drive. And then do a dir on that. There's Hawaii and travel packages. Show me all subdirectories. And there's all the documents. And we're good to go.